Welcome everybody to another edition of Dan's Grand Valley Railroad. Uh, this episode we are going to be working on the Union Pacific boxcar. Uh, like we mentioned last video, uh, going to be doing a little bit of work on that. And uh, I want to show you a couple things over on the bench that I uh, got the other day were pretty cool. So with that being said, let's get to it. So my wife and I were over at the Dollar Tree yesterday, and I found some really cool stuff over there. Uh, like Tri Goglin says, uh, you know, it's a dollar. You know, it's crazy. <laughs> but uh, I'll link to Tri Goglin's uh, video where he does some dollar store shopping. But uh, anyway, uh, I got this uh, organizer. It's just a hardware storage case. And lots of nice little compartments to to store stuff i've got some some wheel sets and some trucks and different things in there um, that i kind of needed to get out of containers and uh onto uh into something nice then they had these stackable organizing drawers and i thought these were really cool uh this one's unopened but i've got two of them in action right here that uh i mean how cool is that? You can just have your little parts in there. I've got some extra plastic stuff and windows. And uh, I may actually use some uh, double-sided tape or something and just stick it to the top of this speaker uh, so that it doesn't move around when I uh, do it. But I can uh, I can stack some more uh, on there. I bought four of them. I bought all they had, actually. This is just a Bluetooth speaker up there. Of course, I've had this uh, for a while, but... Uh, that one's kind of hard to, you know, I get it down and, and stuff is uh, kind of strewn around in there. I kind of like these smaller ones a little better. But the best thing of all that they had at the dollar store is this brush and pencil organizer. And it's three, uh, let's see, no, it was uh, five pieces, these uprights and the bottom and top. And I put it together, it took me two seconds, but it's so nice. I've got all my brushes here. Uh, and, and now, instead of laying here on the bench the way I had them, if I need a round brush, I've got them all kind of categorized on the inside. And then flat brushes I've got kind of on the middle. And then small brushes I've got on this uh, outside edge. So it's just awesome for being able to uh, organize. And then I've got my X-Acto knife right here because I use that all the time. I've got another X-Acto knife with a uh, chisel blade on it. And then also I picked up these little uh, organizer baskets here. You got two of them for a dollar. And that keeps all my bench tools right here where I need everything uh, handy. All the stuff I use all the time, my sprue cutters, my angle cutters, needle nose. Um, this is the, uh, the nice nibbler that I got for working on Vinny's class. And uh, it's all right here now. So uh, my bench is significantly cleaned up. Um, this is my HO scale rule. This is really cool. It's O scale on one side, HO on the other. My cutting edges, my 18 inch cutting edge, and of course my uh, cutting mats. So I'm all set. This is the project we're working on the uh, uh, Vinnie's scratch build class. I'm going to be uh, doing that tonight. Uh, tonight's Tuesday. So uh, getting ready for that. But I wanted to show you guys these organizers. How cool. <laughs> so, all right, let's head out to the garage because we're going to be doing some spray painting. And I'll tell you what we got going on out there. All right, we are going to follow Robert's advice. That's uh, Robert over at Fr Flying Crow. Uh, if you uh, haven't visited him, you want to be sure to check out his channel. Uh, he suggested that we coat the inside of the UP boxcars with a flat black and then hit the outside with a dull coat uh, just to help it look a little more non-plasticky. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to try that. Now, he re recommended dull coat, which is a tester's product. Of course, I went to two hobby shops. They didn't have it. And uh, I ended up getting some clear matte Rust-Oleum. And so that's going to have to do. 
And uh, for the inside, we're just gonna use a paint primer product. I like Krylon. You can use any anything, really. Uh, this is a nice dull black, flat black uh, paint primer. So we're gonna use that on the inside, and then we're gonna hit the outside uh, with the uh, matte clear. So first thing we're gonna do is take the shell off, and we're gonna mask off anything we don't want to have black paint on it. And uh, we'll go from there. So let me get uh, that going. All right, so these are pretty easy. There's nothing real uh, spectacular about how they're held in. You just kind of spread the bottom of the, uh, the shell a little bit, and boom, they pop right out. Uh, so here's, we'll start working on that. Here, I just wanted to show you the weights I had added to these cars to make them five and a half ounces. Um, I actually added uh, another ounce to it today just to bring it up to the five and a half. I think that's gonna help it run just a little bit better on my layout, but it does run okay. Uh, so uh, that's how it looks. They're nice self stick weights. I think that's a pretty neat job. Okay, so we are just gonna take some tape here and I don't really care if the bottom edge gets a little bit of black or, or doesn't get a little bit of black. I think it's more important to protect the outside. So I'm just gonna actually run the tape on the inside lip a little bit and then just wrap it over. And I'm just wrapping it over loosely because I wanna protect these steps here like this. So that's fine. Need a little bit more in that corner. that when I do this I'm not uh, really particularly afraid of using too much tape I'd rather use a little bit of tape up and make sure I have a good job than to uh, go sparing on the tape and end up getting paint all over the outside. <laughs> okay, now that I have this pretty well masked off on the inside where I don't want paint, I'm just taking some paper towel and just ran some tape up there and I'm just gonna use it to sort of wrap right around there. And actually I can use the same one on this side. So I'm just gonna Fold it down here. Cut myself a little bit more tape on this end. Actually, I think I'll... Okay, so I'll show you here. I've just got it thoroughly covered, a little bit of the lip down inside, but this is what we're gonna paint. The yellow part, everything else where I don't want overspray has been covered up, either by paper towel or tape. So we're just gonna set it here and shoot it and see what we get. All right, here we go. I've shaken up my flat black and ready. I, I shot a little tester here, but I'll just shoot a little tester and let's just hit it. We're not gonna take a lot of great pains with this, but as you know, with spray painting, it's always better to do a few light coats and come back after it's dry than to try to glob it all on at one time. So I can see that this is gonna take another coat just by the way it's covering. So we'll just shoot it like this. And we will let that dry nicely. I might be able to do one more right in there. We'll let that dry. Come back in about 10 minutes see how that's looking flats usually tend to dry pretty quickly so we'll uh we will uh see how that looks in about 10 minutes all right well after it's dried now about 10 minutes um it looks really really good uh inside there and there is just a little bit uh see if you can see it here a uh, little bit uh, that it could use just on the end there. No big deal. 
but uh, just for grins and giggles, I might just shoot the ends uh, here. So let's, uh, yeah, we'll just grab the paint, shake it up. Actually, I think I might just hold it. Yep, down in the end like that. And then just like that, just an overall fogging. And I'm pretty happy with that. So we will let that get good and dry now. And uh, then we'll take the tape off and we'll do the outside with the matte clear. Okay, so I had it out in the sun, actually. I set it on my truck for a little while in the sun and it looks pretty good. So let's go ahead. We'll take off all this paper and tape and see what we have. You know, the nice thing about these paints these days is that they're designed for plastic and metal. So you don't have to be afraid to use them with these plastic kits. Um, yeah, that looks pretty good. Check that out. That looks all right. So I can see what Robert meant. Uh, it's definitely dulled it out a little bit. You can see the yellow is not quite so bright yellow. Uh, so we will do the, the matte coat and then I haven't done the other. Remember I bought two of these, so we'll do the other one, uh, later, but we will compare them side by side and see how they look. Um, if this one definitely looks more realistic, but I can tell, uh, just, uh, initially right off the bat that it's, it's, uh, toned down the yellow quite a bit, just having that black inside. So now we'll get ready to shoot the, the clear mat. All right, I'm shaking up the, uh, the Rust-Oleum mat clear. Uh, again, see, also bonds to plastic. So uh, very nice uh, that all this stuff nowadays works with plastic or metal. I remember, in, probably a lot of you remember when you were a kid, you go and grab your dad's... Uh, lacquer spray paint and shoot a model with it and it would melt <laughs> at least uh, i did so nowadays they they pretty much got that covered so all right i'm just gonna do a light fogging let me test it over here okay i'm just gonna come by and fog that fog the top gonna shoot the ends this end. Okay, and should have prepared for having something prepared to turn it around, but I didn't, so we'll just use this pencil here. No big deal. I can see I got a little bit of orange peel. Maybe I'm a little bit far away, but I'm hoping maybe it'll be a little self-centering and it'll, or uh, self-leveling, I should say, and it'll level out. Hopefully, but no big deal. We want it to look like a used box car anyway. Okay. I think that's about all I'm going to do with this. And uh, we'll let that dry now. Um, I'm not sure how long this will take to dry. I know the, uh, the uh, Krylon flat black said 10 minutes. This will probably be uh, quite a bit more. So... Uh, anyway, we'll let that dry. I'll put it back together and then we'll compare it with the other one. All right, back down in the basement workshop uh, under the fluorescent lights. Uh, I've got the two side by side. I can tell a difference uh, in person. I'm not sure if you can tell on video. Um, this is the one we just worked on. This is the one I haven't done anything on. Uh, this one appears a little more orange because uh, it's a little darker yellow and the shininess especially of the logos is greatly reduced there is still a little bit uh, so i may have to examine maybe getting some dull coat I'm not sure how that'll work differently from what i used um, this is the untouched one and let me see you can see the logo especially is very shiny. The lettering, very, very shiny. Uh, I think a little bit brighter yellow still. Here we can 
zoom in. You can still see a little bit of glare when I flex it under the light, but definitely less than the untouched ones. So I don't know, you guys be the judge. Was it worth it uh, to come out looking pretty good? Uh, maybe I need to get the tester's dull coat and dull it out, or maybe I need to grab my Vallejo paints uh, here's a model wash that I used on the uh, AccuRail box car. Maybe I need to weather it and uh, wash it out a little bit and see if that'll help. But uh, you guys let me know in comments what you think. Uh, I'll go ahead and throw these on the layout and we'll uh, run it around, see how they look. So I've got the, uh, the one we just worked on right here. And this is the one I haven't done anything to. Might be hard to pick up on the camera. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. That's all we've got time for this week. But uh, thank you so much to all you new subscribers. We're up to, last time I checked, 353. Mind-blowing. Uh, keep the comments coming and uh, the questions and anything I can answer, I certainly will. Um, I will link to some of the pages that I mentioned. Of course, Flying Crow, uh, which always check my uh, descriptions because I have links down there for uh, other things. So, uh, uh, Flying Crow and Try Goglin, I'll be, uh, linking to them right at the top. And also I redesigned my logo, which you may have noticed on my page, but, uh, I've got a Teespring store now. So if anyone's interested in some, uh, Dan's Grand Valley Railroad merchandise, you can check out my Teespring store. Uh, that'll be right down in the description. Uh, I have some samples coming, so uh, when I get those, I'll feature them on the camera. But uh, otherwise, feel free to check it out. And uh, thanks again for watching. See you next update.